This is NDTV. And you're watching Classics. In the world of commerce and industry, few Indian communities have made a bigger contribution than the Marwaris. Towards the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th, hundreds of young Marwari men abandoned their desert villages to seek their fortunes in cities like Calcutta and Bombay, fortunes that endure to this day. This week, we bring you the story of yet another Marwari family, the Singhanias. early uh, 19th century, or let's say 1800s beginning, Vinodhi Ramji, who was our maybe seven, eight generations ago, he migrated to, let's say, Gangetic Plain, uh, because, you know, from uh, Rajasthan, the same place, Chikhavati area, we come from a village called Singhana, this is called Singhania. And uh, naturally, and after that, uh, there were a uh, number of uh, and family members who then separated, uh, who, who spread into different areas from time to time. There were different towns in UP, Farukkabad, Mirzapur, Kanpur, and so on. And they set up their business offices in Calcutta and so on. And it was late in the 40s that uh, my father moved to Calcutta uh, and, and my uncle, uh, Lala Kalashpaji, moved to Bombay. Because in Calcutta, we had acquired the National Insurance Company, which became it was the third largest insurance company later on. And uh, then he has also undertaken, he had also undertaken a project to produce aluminum, which he did for the first time in India. So similarly, Lala Kalashpaji moved to Bombay because we had acquired, we, we had acquired Raymond's at that time, and they weren't caught textile mill. Tell me what you know of your, do you remember your grandfather? You met him, didn't you? No. I, I was a very young child. He died in 1937 and I was born in 33. But he was the one who created the empire. He was the one who created the industrial edifice, if I may say so. Earlier also there was trading, there was banking, uh, there was so all those sort of commercial activities. And there was an oil mill, a flour mill, I mean, that sort of cotton ginning. But he really established the uh, industrial base. And that was the first one was in 1921 with the first cotton textile mill in northern India. How did he do it? What do you know about that? All I know is that he was a very clear-headed man. And he was also enthused by... Uh, that India should get economic freedom as well. Enthused by the Swadeshi movement. And then he put the cotton textile mill in 1921. And naturally, the British just didn't like it. But he went on. difficulties he faced was, of course, the preference was given to others. And uh, if you had to marry to, along with your nationalism, then it was difficult. For instance, in 1930, he joined the freedom movement and took a large procession, led a large procession in Kanpur with one lakh people, I'm told. And that naturally was, didn't, uh, was not very pleasing to the Britishers. He joined the Swadeshi movement. and. Uh, at the behest of uh, Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi and Pandit Mutalal Nehru, friends, 
One day, he put all his empire, Lancashire imported cloth uh, in the, uh, uh, and burnt it because they had said, please boycott the British, uh, British goods or foreign goods. So he had the conviction. And your father, what was he like? He was a great personality. In fact, he was a very forward-looking individual, very dynamic and very visionary. When you look back at his life, what do you see is his biggest achievement, as his biggest contribution to business? His biggest achievement to contribution, uh, contribution was uh, creating uh, businesses which were new in India, which were never done before. Aluminium, for instance, he set up aluminium smelter in 1940s, early 40s. In, uh, and there was no technology available here. He brought it from different, different countries. And there were uh, some uh, problems when the war broke out. And the ship carrying the vital drawings sank. He went to Pandit Madan Mohan Malvi in Banaras Indian University and said, can your professors help me? Because the, half the plant was already installed and so on. Then they said, look, Mrs. Ghania, we have our professors have taught chemistry, but they've never produced aluminum. So nonetheless, he got hold of a couple of professors from VHU, and they helped in uh, setting up the aluminum plant, and which was a very, very successful enterprise. Despite their considerable business achievements, the Singhanias like to believe that their real legacy is the family value system. One is the trust, the trust. Second is caring for people, whether it is your internal, your family members, or external, or people who work for you, and the society at large. And thirdly, integrity. Our parents taught us deep integrity. I still remember an instance in business life. As you know, we had license raj system in our country. And in those days, uh, when I had to travel to Delhi, we used to live in Calcutta to get the licenses. And it was an important license. And my brother had traveled to Delhi. And when he went back, and my father asked him what happened, he said so-and-so was demanding X amount of money for this particular license. And so we have to decide. He flared at him. He said, what nonsense? We are, if you can convince them on merits, do it, otherwise forget it. Finally, we lost the license, obviously. I think the legacy is to uh, uphold values uh, that the family has had, which are to do with uh, honesty, uh, being seen as trusted people, uh, integrity, and uh, really, I would say, learning how to work hard and really going through life, working hard, not just inheriting something. Yes, you have an inheritance, so you can't stop that. But it's what you build from the inheritance. And it's not just uh, you've lived your life because of inheritance. What, do you, what would you consider your biggest contribution after you took over? To continue the legacy of hard work and uh, uh, keeping the value system. Describe the value system. Value system is very simple. Value system is that you have integrity, you have intel honesty, you have fair play, you are uh, openness, and, and that you will do in the, when you are not being looked into somewhere by anyone, do exactly what you will do when you do or you are in the open. And you believe that others should grow. You do not envy anybody. I feel very privileged to be a Singhania Bahu and, uh, and take their values with me and uh, try to you know, give it to my sons who are the futures of the Singhania clan. And uh, they can also become a good, a very good human. See, everything is nothing to do. I mean, business is business. Everyone does business. But then to be a real good human being with all the humility, with all the good qualities, it's necessary for us to grow them into that kind of a, the person that they, they come out with. The Singhania family prides itself on having remained honest even in the days when businessmen paid more than 95% of what they earned in taxes. 
That was the test of the time. That is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that uh, the, the, the black money didn't come in the picture or nothing happened. I'm not saying that. I, I'm not uh, um, um, professing that. But I think we never believed in it, we never believed it. And we were always sorry, don't, don't, all straightforward things. That was at least what I learned from them. <laughs>